Hi, it's Thursday morning, uh, the 17th of April 2022. This morning I'm going to do a short video about glazing. Um, this is a small salad plate. It's been uh, bisque fired uh, to a thousand degrees. And it's called bisque firing because you end up with something a bit like a biscuit. It's, it's dry and porous. Um, it can't return to squidgy clay, but it's not a finished product either. The process of glazing is a bit like dipping a rich tea biscuit in a cup of tea. Um, the glaze is a mixture of minerals, powdered minerals suspended in water. It's not a solution, it's a suspension. Um, the, the minerals and the water are in fairly precise uh, quantity ratio in order to get, to get the thickness of glaze that you want. So you dip the piece into the glaze or you pour the glaze over and the porous bisqueware sucks the water in and while it sucks the water in the mineral particles also get sucked towards the pot and they get stuck on the surface as the water travels into the bisqueware. So it's actually a fairly precise process. Um, the, the bisqueware has a finite amount of um, capacity to soak up water. Um, sometimes if you've got a very uh, thick piece of bisqueware the the sucking power of the piece is quite high and if you left it in the glaze you'd soak up much too much thickness of glaze um for a very very thin uh bisqueware sometimes its sucking power is is not quite enough to even soak up the thickness that you want but anyway with 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 medium thickness bisqueware um the power to soak up the glaze is is a medium power but you usually still want to limit the exposure of the wet glaze with the pot so you either pour it over gently or you soak it for something like three seconds one two three during which time it soaks up the water it sucks the glaze particles onto the surface um, and then you stop <laughs> um, and you end up with a layer of dry particles on top of the bisque. this is this is one i did yesterday um, you can see in this light you can see there's a, a thumbprint there where I was holding it um, so the, the glaze didn't get onto there um, this is very uh, dry and boring looking at the moment this is the same glaze I'm going to use now um, this is the glaze on some brown clay and there's another glaze on top of it as well but you can see it has a sort of a fairly sort of low key sort of rustic uh, feel on the iron bearing clay but it has a nice depth to it on the white clay which is what this is um, this is what the glaze looks like it's much lighter brighter um, it's lovely and translucent um, there is also an, another there's a, like a blue glaze which is making that faint stripe you can see which I won't be using on this bowl if you look closely you can see you can see there's a lovely speckle under that glaze and that's definitely coming from the glaze because this clay is very very white and that speckle will will be coming from the glaze probably tiny particles of iron in the glaze Now this dish um, has got some impressed um, patterns on it, which I have also inlaid with some underglaze colours. Um, I've then put by hand, using a paintbrush, some, some transparent glaze over those coloured impressed areas. And then further, I have applied wax resist on top of that. So. The coloured areas, the, the flowers and leaves, um, 
are coated in transparent glaze and I don't want the ash glaze on there as well which is why I put the wax resist. I've never done precisely this before. I don't know what the overall effect will be so if it's good I'll show you at a later date. Um, anyway I'm going to try and coat this bowl with ash glaze. Um, I will do it by pouring and we'll see how it goes. large bucket here to catch the, the splashes as they come off because there will be splashes there always are pouring some into this little jug um, the ash glaze is caustic because it's made of wood ash really I should be wearing gloves for doing this in fact I think I will put some on any kinds of skin condition, eczema or dermatitis or even just dry hands, the ash glaze will definitely exacerbate it immediately. Right, here I go. I'm not going to talk about this, I'm just going to try and do it. I still find this extremely difficult. I'm just waiting for the clay to finish pulling in the moisture for the remaining sort of drippy bits. It mostly has now. Reasonably satisfied with that. So if you look, you can see where my wax resist has well resisted the ash glaze. I think um I think there I must have forgotten to put any any resist on. Uh, yeah, any wax on that bit. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that comes out and, and whether the the ash glaze has enough translucency to show that off. Um, but it'll probably be good. It'll add some interest and some randomness to the surface of the pot. Um, Anyway, I'm pleased I've got a fairly even coating of the ash glaze. I can remove these little bits that are on the wax resist here with a sponge, but I'll do that now. I'm just going to try and do that. Need a smaller sponge. If I can do it with a paintbrush. You want to be a bit careful because actually it's fairly easy to disrupt wax resist over glaze and in fact I think I already have um, and I certainly don't want unglazed areas so I'm going to just leave that and I think it'll be okay yeah so white white plate with green ash glaze and some coloured flowers 
um I, you can see the underside i've got to put some glaze in that middle in that middle section yet but i'll do that separately um if this comes out well you will see it at some later date thanks for watching